A new decade is upon us, and Hollywood's major studios have lined up a slew of projects to compete for your film-going dollar. Some of the upcoming releases on the calendar are highly anticipated sequels, but that isn't all we're expecting to see. Even though the initial teaser arrived way back in December 2019, we still know very little about the plot of Christopher Nolan's upcoming action epic Tenet, which is slated for release on August 12, 2020. Of course, that date has changed a few times already and may change again due to the coronavirus pandemic. It's reversing the flow of time. Because of us being here now, I mean, it never happened. We do know that it's an expensive production, with the budget reportedly clocking in at about $225 million. On top of that, the sci-fi thriller was filmed with IMAX cameras, so expect big things, literally. The film stars John David Washington, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Robert Pattinson, among others. Pattinson told USA Today in April 2019 that he had been sworn to secrecy regarding the details of Tennant's plot. The actor was fond of the script, however, and said Nolan changed his mind about doing big-budget movies, explaining, I've been a little wary of doing big movies for years and years, but there's just something about Chris Nolan's stuff. He seems like the only director now who can do what is essentially a very personal, independent movie that has huge scale. I read the script, and it's unreal. New life was breathed into the zombie genre in 2016 with Train to Busan, a Korean horror film written and directed by Young Sang-ho that followed a group of passengers trapped on a train as a zombie virus spread quickly through its cars. The film is action-packed, funny, and terrifying all at once, with fully realized characters and a simple yet well-executed story. It garnered a slew of award wins and nominations, and is generally regarded as one of the best zombie films of recent years. Four years later, Yun is returning to the story with Peninsula, which is set in an evacuated and apparently abandoned Korea, now completely overrun by the undead. The film follows Jung Suk, a former Marine who takes a job that sends him into the blighted country. Once they get there, he and his team are met not only with zombies, but a group of survivors who have made the most of the epidemic by turning it into entertainment. Peninsula isn't just a follow-up to Train to Busan. It's an over-the-top expansion of the universe Young created in 2016. As the filmmaker explained to Screen Daily in March 2020, The scale of Peninsula can't compare to Train to Busan. It makes it look like an independent film. Train to Busan was a high-concept film shot in narrow spaces, whereas Peninsula has a much wider scope of movement. As such, it carries a much larger price tag, $16 million, nearly double what its predecessor had to work with. It looks as though its money was well spent, however. Peninsula appears to be twice as crazy as Train to Busan was. Disney is set to turn another one of their most popular animated films into a live-action epic in 2020, debuting an updated version of Mulan. The movie, which was initially set to be released in 2018 but later pushed back, will be directed by Nikki Caro based on a script from Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver. The remake received positive reviews in early screening, but was hit with a last-minute delay due to the coronavirus outbreak. I will never give up. The initial delay in the film's release date reportedly happened because it took Disney a year of searching across the world to find its star. They eventually landed on Chinese actress Yipei Liu, also known as Crystal Liu. Liu is one of China's most popular actresses, who has been nicknamed Fairy Sister due to her innocent-seeming public persona. With the lead warrior princess in plays, the cast was rounded out with international stars Jet Li, Donnie Yen, and Jason Scott Lee. Party on, dudes, for we are truly living through a bona fide Keanu-sans. Thanks in no small part to the ongoing success of the John Wick series, rumors have been bouncing around Hollywood about potential sequels and reboots for everything from The Matrix to Speed. One Keanu-centric follow-up that's definitely coming is Bill & Ted Face the Music, a hopefully fantastic voyage following in the radical footsteps of 1989's Excellent Adventure and 1991's Bogus Journey. After many years of rumblings, Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter officially confirmed in a video in March of 2019 that strange things were indeed afoot at the Circle K once again. William Sadler came back to reprise his role as the Grim Reaper, and original writers Chris Matheson and Ed Solomon also returned to pen the screenplay, with Galaxy Quest director Dean Pariseau also signing on to see the movie through. The sequel will catch up with the now middle-aged Bill S. Preston and Theodore Logan as they realize that adult responsibilities like fatherhood have prevented them from coming up with the universe-saving song that they were destined to write. They will be assisted by their daughters in their long-awaited third quest, and will once again come face-to-face -face with death. Remember to be excellent to each other when you line up for your tickets. Be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes! Dare we even talk about the new Mutants as a 2020 release? At this rate, assigning an actual date to this seemingly cursed X-Men project is like waiting for a toad to get struck by lightning. After an initial trailer was released in the bygone days of October 2017, the movie has been pushed back no fewer than four times, shifting from April 2018 to February 2019, then to August 2019. 
The release of Disney's post-Fox merger schedule revealed that New Mutants had been delayed yet again, all the way to April 3, 2020. Just when all seemed to be finally going well for the film, it became one of many projects delayed by the coronavirus pandemic. So other than the latest one, what's behind all the delays? By all accounts, it's not actually the quality of the film itself. Unlike Dark Phoenix, New Mutants has reportedly been well-received in test screenings. The movie's source comics, created in the 1980s by Chris Claremont and Bill Sienkiewicz, remain unique fan favorites. The cast features up-and-comers like The Witches' Anya Taylor-Joy and Game of Thrones' Maisie Williams. It's apparently a number of outside factors that have kept the film from coming out, from conflicts with the release date of Deadpool 2, a decision to play up the movie's horror elements with reshoots that reportedly didn't even end up happening, and the earth-shaking Disney-Fox merger. Hopefully, we'll actually be able to watch The New Mutants in 2020, and hopefully it will live up to its potential as a stylish and frightening final Fox X-Men movie. In 2018, A Quiet Place took Hollywood by surprise, turning a modest $17 million budget around to pull in nearly $350 million worldwide at the box office. It's also one of the most highly acclaimed horror films in recent years, with Rotten Tomatoes granting it an overwhelming fresh rating and calling it a, quote, ruthlessly intelligent creature feature that's as original as it is scary. So it's no wonder Paramount Pictures would want to capitalize with a sequel. A Quiet Place Part 2 was initially slated to hit theaters on March 20, 2020, but was delayed at the last minute due to the coronavirus pandemic. While writer-director John Krasinski is confirmed for the sequel now, it wasn't always that way. In an interview with The Ringer's The Big Picture podcast, Krasinski said he initially didn't want to have anything to do with the second film, but was convinced by his producer to jot down a few ideas. And then after like three weeks, he was like, why don't you just write this and then we'll get another filmmaker. Like just And of course, Jedi Mind tricked me into signing on to the sequel. As far as the story goes, writers Scott Beck and Brian Woods knew that there was the potential to focus on new families. Krasinski seemed to agree that the sequel wouldn't be just about the Abbots of the original, telling The Hollywood Reporter, in our circumstance, the thing that the audience loved most was the world. That's the cool thing that you could explore on and on. 2017's Wonder Woman is the most critically acclaimed movie in the DC Extended Universe by a wide margin. It makes sense, then, that Gal Gadot's embodiment of the Amazonian warrior is being fast-tracked back to the big screen, while Superman and Batman are left to fight a legion of issues standing in the way of their next movie appearance. She with you? I thought she was with you. Diana's second solo adventure hasn't been without delays of its own, however. The movie was pushed back from its original 2019 holiday season release to June 5, 2020, and then to October due to the coronavirus. When the movie does arrive, it will bring with it the blast from the past promised by its title. Filling in part of the timeline between the first movie's World War I setting and the hero's re-emergence in Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, Wonder Woman 1984 will see the return of Gadot, Chris Pine, Robin Wright, and director Patty Jenkins. SNL alum Kristen Wiig joins the fray as nemesis Cheetah, while The Mandalorian's Pedro Pascal pulls the strings as evil tycoon Maxwell Lord. Marvel Studios was originally set to release Black Widow, its 24th film, in the beginning of the MCU's Phase 4 on May 1st, but that date got pushed back six months. The shift wound up affecting not only Black Widow, but the rest of Marvel's Phase 4 projects as well. Chronologically, the film will still take place between Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. In it, Scarlett Johansson's Natasha Romanoff sets off to confront her past and the people she left behind when she traded her first family for the Avengers. Family, back together again. According to its cast, the film is going to be something of a departure from other Marvel properties. It's a little dirty. Um, it's a little salty. I like all of that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like bringing some realness to the Marvel Universe. Joining Johansson are David Harbour as Alexi, a.k.a. Red Guardian, Florence Pugh as Natasha's fellow Black Widow agent Yelena, and Rachel Weisz as Melina, a character who's reportedly been through the Widow program five times. After several development setbacks, including Daniel Craig's uncertain return to the franchise following 2015 Spectre, the latest Bond film was scheduled for wide release on April 8th. Unfortunately, its troubles weren't over, as the movie would become the first major film industry victim of coronavirus concerns, leading to an eight-month delay announced in March. It's just one of the many ways in which getting Bond back on screen has proven to be a challenge. I need a favor, brother. You're the only one I trust for this. Late in 2018, the film's original director, Danny Boyle, left the project due to a script dispute. Only a month later, True Detective's Kerry Fukunaga signed on in his place, but Boyle's departure wound up setting the film's release date back six months. While No Time to Die will officially mark Craig's final film as James Bond, it will reportedly introduce a brand new 007 to the franchise. Returning cast members include Christoph Waltz, Ben Wishaw, Leia Sadu, Naomi Harris, Jeffrey Wright, and Ray Fiennes. New to the film are Lashana Lynch as a fresh double O agent and Rami Malek, who will portray the movie's villain. 
No Time to Die is set sometime after Bond is retired from active service. He's called back when the CIA needs help with a mysterious villain armed with dangerous new technology. Frank Herbert's 1965 novel Dune has had a towering influence over the world of science fiction, which is probably why filmmakers have been trying to bring Herbert's universe to the screen for decades. Avant-garde director Alejandro Jodorowsky's ambitious but abandoned attempt in the 70s was so legendary it eventually became the subject of a hit documentary. David Lynch helmed the blockbuster version of Dune in 1984, but while the film has something of a cult following, many, including Lynch himself, found it unsatisfying. A sci-fi miniseries in 2000 served as a faithful adaptation, but suffered from the limitations of a TV budget. Now, a rival in Blade Runner 2049 director Denis Villeneuve hopes to get it right. His strongest asset so far is an already stacked cast, which includes Timothy Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson, Dave Bautista, Stellan Skarsgård, Oscar Isaac, Zendaya, Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin, and Jason Momoa. Another point in the production's favor? The film will reportedly focus on only the first half of Herbert's novel, avoiding the overstuffed confusion of the Lynch movie. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.